Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be painting this head, which is known as the OMK head, sold at uh, wolfkingcustoms.com. Going to show you the paints that I'll be using. This first one here is a So Flat Black. Um, I've put it in a dropper bottle there to make it a little easier. Uh, this is a Mornfang Brown, which is from Citadel. Then we have a So Flat Cadmium Red Dark. Next one is a Citadel Celestra Gray. Any gray really would work there. Then you've got a Jacaro Orange. This is a pretty important one. That's from Citadel. You also have a Troll Slayer Orange. And then finally here, a Flayed One Flesh. So as I get rolling here, I'm just going to start out with um, three paints on my palette. I'm going to start off with the Mornfang Brown. Then I'm going to add some of the So Flat Black on there. Um, and then just kind of a little bit of a drop of the Cadmium Red. After I have the three of those colors in there, I'm going to start mixing my base color. So I'm going to mix in the black with the brown um, and just start darkening up that brown color to get the base that I'm looking for. This is going to be a little bit darker than what the finished color is going to look like on the face, uh, just because some of the last layers that we do are going to be quite a bit lighter with that original uh, more fang brown color. So here I'm just mixing up the two colors and then trying, I'm going to try to thin them to the level that I want um, to put them on my, my uh, 3D print. Now, in terms of thinness, what I'm looking for here is really kind of like the consistency of milk um, for that initial base coat. Maybe even a little bit thicker than that, but that's you know definitely not much. It's, it's about that consistency that we're talking about. So you see me rubbing my paintbrush there, try to get it right. And then usually what I'll do is just kind of swipe it on my thumbnail and make sure that I've got it loaded with the right amount of paint um, and that it's you know not too thin or thick. Um, because I was mixing with my paintbrush, I've got a little bit of extra goop on there. So I'm just dabbing it in my water there and then wiping it on my paper towel that I've got handy. Um, and then I'll start working on the figure. For, um, just mention this, for the paper towels, I mean, you can use whatever. I use Viva. Um, they, they're pretty thick um, and allows me to use a couple different sides on there. Um, so right here, I'm just working on the face and you know throwing that initial base coat on there i did pull the magnifier over there at first and it kind of messed up the focus so um had to cut part of that part out but you can see here i'm just kind of finishing up the base um, on that first coat just making sure i get all the areas um yep all around the hairline and don't be afraid to go into the hair a bit um, that, that actually can help you as you're going forward because, you know, towards the end of your hairlines, you can kind of see the scalp underneath. So um, having some of that extra in there is not going to hurt anything. Here I'm using a heat gun and I'm just kind of drying that base coat um, to make sure that everything is completely ready before I put on the next one. You could just sit this out and let it air dry for a while. Um, but because I was making this for a tutorial, wanted to speed up the process a little bit. All right. And I just check and make sure that I got all the areas covered. Um, if I didn't, I would just go back through and touch those up. Then I'm going to use this Jokero Orange. And I'm just going to get some down on my wet palette here. Uh, because I don't have this in a dropper, it's a little bit more difficult to get out. Um, but I just shake it till I get some on the edge and then just plop some on my 
wet palette there. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to dry brush some of this on the head. Um, so I'm going to get a dry brush. This one here I'm using is just a number eight testers. Um, there's a three pack that they sell on this. That's uh, I think it's a two and eight and a 10. So this is the middle brush on there. And I'm just going to kind of load up that brush and then dry off as much as I can on my paper towel and do some dry brushing here, which is just as simple as it sounds. It's just really drying the paint off of your brush um, and then applying it to uh, the head. And what I'm gonna do on here is I'm actually gonna work in a downward motion from the top of the head uh, down towards the chin. And I'm just swiping downward and then continuing to do that. So what this will do, this will hit the highlighted areas and make them uh, pop with a little bit lighter color as we move forward. And it's going to hit the areas that basically light would hit. So by working at a downward angle, I'm only hitting the tops of the areas and not the bottoms of the areas. So for instance, I would want to hit the top of the cheekbone, not under the cheekbone, uh, which is what working downward in a dry brushing fashion like this does. You wanna make sure you hit all the areas, including like the lips, the, um, the ears, everything, um, and just continue to swipe in a downward direction like this. Once I'm done with this, um, I do tend to go back and look at certain areas that should really be highlighted even more and I may touch them up with a smaller brush. Um, but you can see here as I hold this one up to the camera, you know, kind of what that begins to look like. And this is where I'm, you know, going in with a smaller brush and just kind of touching up with that light color. Some of those areas like the forehead, the cheekbone, you know, things that would really catch some of the light. Um, the, the tip of the nose, the top of the ears, those kind of things. You see me there just kind of patting that down with my finger. Um, I don't know how to explain what that really does, but it's, it's like um, instead of having it too, um, too thick of a layer of paint, let me just kind of pat some down and... and um, helps to blend it a bit um, and that's what I'm trying to do because I don't want it to fully be that color that I'm I'm painting there I want that other dark base to still show through um, but I do want to highlight it with that so you can see kind of what that looks like there the next step is to work with this troll slayer orange and what we're doing here is that we're going to really thin this down so before I was talking about like the consistency of milk uh, this is going to be thinner than that. This is pretty much like a wash is what we're doing here. So we're just going to get the tiniest bit on the wet palette. And then I'm going to add quite a bit of water to this um, in order to thin this down. And what we're doing is we're going to go over the entire, uh, all of the skin. So the, you know, by the ears, the lips, the, the you know, the main fit part of the face and we're going to cover everything that we've done so far with that. And it's going to start to blend those two colors that we've got. We've got the, you know, the light highlighted color. We've got the darker base that we were using. And by using this really thin wash of the orange, it's going to help to start blending those two colors together and make them not as drastic of a change from the dark to the light. So you can see here, I'm just really thinning this down quite a bit. Now you can use a median to uh, thin it down. Uh, they do sell some that are pretty good. Uh, I tend to just use water. Uh, I don't typically have problems as long as I take my time mixing it. If you go too fast, sometimes you might get some air bubbles in there, and that can cause you some problems when you're painting, but... If you take your time, water tends to work just fine. So what I'm doing here is I'm swiping that on my thumb and I'm looking for it to be very translucent. 
I will want to still see everything underneath of where I'm painting. Um, I just want this to kind of go over top and help start to blend that in. So it's a little hard to see here. It's kind of cutting some of that off. I think as I go to this next part here, yeah, you can start, you know, seeing where it's very translucent. And you can really see through that and see all the stuff that's happening underneath. But it's also blending those parts together. And I'm just going to cover the whole face on this um, and the ears. You do want to watch out for any sort of pooling with this because we've got this really thin down wash. Um, it will tend to try to get into cracks and just sit there and then you'll have this very bright orange in the cracks that you don't want so um, you just want to if you start to see it pull just hit that area with your paintbrush and try to pull some of that up um, and don't let it dry there in one spot one of the places that it'll tend to do that or especially is either in or around the ears um, so just Keep going back on that. Um, if you need to, you could always dry off your brush a bit, get some of that wash off of there, and then hit that area where it's pooling again, and just make sure that you don't have it um, you know, leaving those streaks around the edges or in any sort of crevices. Touching up right there around the ear where it was pooling. So you can see there I wiped off all the paint on my brush um, and actually put some water on it. And I'm hitting a, an area or two where it kind of pulled up where I didn't want it to or it was a little bit too thick on the on the orange. And then this is what it looks like when it's done. Um, it's still wet there, but you can see how it helped to blend those two drastic colors together. All right. Uh, next, I'm starting to take some of that brown out that we used as the base. And I'm going to add uh, some of the uh, red to it as well. Oh, actually... Sorry, on this part, I'm doing the um, dark around the hairline. So I'm actually just mixing even a darker color than what that base was. And I'm going to go all around the hairline and do any sort of shadows on this figure. So this would be like under the cheekbone, uh, the upper lip, um, under the, the eye area. So like under the eyebrow. Um, any of the areas where light isn't getting to as much because it's being blocked by something that's raised above it. Um, so like under the ear or behind the ear, things like that where light's really not getting to. So I start with around the hairline. Uh, you tend to find that, that area um, because of the hair has got a little bit of shadow on the face. So I just start with that first and move around that then once i've got around the hairline i start working on the area underneath the cheeks so once again this is area that is going to be um, you know kind of blocked by the sunlight because it's hitting the top part of the cheek and then underneath the cheek isn't getting as much sun so we want that to be a bit darker And just coloring in that dark area right there. So here you can see what it looks like once I've done the dark around the hairline, underneath the cheekbones, the upper lip as well as underneath the eyebrow or eye ridge. 
So now I'm taking that original um, base color that I mixed up, which is the darker Morn Fraying Brown. Um, and I'm going to get this really thin. And this is almost as thin as the Troll Slayer Orange that we were doing earlier. Um, not quite as liquidy as that, but pretty close. And I'm just going over the entire thing again um, and covering this area. So now it's bringing together the highlighted areas that we did, the dark areas around the hairline as, the, as well as underneath the cheekbones and stuff, um, and everything that was blended in by the Troll Slayer Orange. We're now putting this light color or light, um, should say, um, thin down version of the base on here so that all of those things are still showing through, um, but it's starting to bring it together even more and make it more look a little bit more realistic and not so hard with the edges on there. So I'm just covering the whole area. Um, you know, once again, make sure you get the ears, the lips. Um, I have definitely had a few of these where I'm working on the main part of the face and I get to a point where I'm like, oh yeah, that looks good. And then I look over and I forgot an ear or I forgot the lips or something like that. So just make sure that you get everything here and we're just, you know, making sure that we're covering that whole area with that thin down um, base that we were using. So in this part here, I'm working on the lips and the inner ear. So I'm just taking that initial base, adding some red to it and mixing up a just kind of a redder version of that base tone. Um, one of the things as you're working on flesh tones, whether it's darker flesh tones or Caucasian flesh tones, you really want to make sure that you start with that base and then create your shades and highlights and blush areas with that same base tone, but just by, you know, adding some reds or adding some black or whatever you need to, to, um, make those colors still blend and look natural together. So on the lips here, I've, I've mixed in some of that red with the base tone, thinned it down and I'm covering the lips. You don't want this to look like lipstick. Um, you don't want it to really stand out. You just want it to be a very subtle color difference here. So I'm painting the bottom lip. Uh, I'm not touching the top lip at this point because that area is going to not get as much light. So we're gonna make it a little bit darker for that top lip. So we'll do that here in a second. But I'm hitting that bottom lip and then I'm also gonna get the inner part of the ear, uh, which will create a little bit of uh, different color and variation in that ear too, to where the outside is a little bit um, brighter of the, the brown color so that it it's like catching the light. Behind the ear is gonna be more of the darker brown. And then on the inside, we've got more of kind of the redder brown as it's closer to the, the inside of the ear. So here you can see the bottom lip there. Um, looks very natural, not um, anything that's really jarring. Then I'm taking the Mornfang Brown before we mixed it. So this is not the base tone. This is the original Mornfang Brown. And I'm really thinning this down and I'm going to do kind of a wash with the Mornfang Brown over the entire, um, all of the skin areas. And this is just bringing everything together. This is kind of the last step of the flesh tone is, is just going over everything that we've done so far and giving it kind of an overall lighter tone and making the highlights pop while blending in the shaded areas. So we're just going over the entire face here. Uh, once again, make sure that you're hitting everything, including the lips, the ears, um, all that area. And this will start bringing all of that together. There will be some areas that we will touch up here in a little while. Um, you want to make sure that everything is blended really nicely. So there may be certain areas that you have to go back through and darken them up a bit. Uh, you may need to go back over the lips 
and and put more of that reddish color in there to make them pop um you know so we will look at all that after we get this coat on there um, just kind of see what needs to be done So here I'm just hitting, hitting everything with a hair dryer, um, making sure that everything is dry on that wash that I was doing. Um, and then I'm just going to look at the, the head and, and see if there's any areas that I need to go back and touch up. So pull out my magnifier here. Um, typically, I will use this magnifier on pretty much the entire head as I'm painting. It does make it a little bit difficult when I'm filming. So for most of this, I tried doing with reader glasses, which is a little bit of a struggle, but I thought that it made for a little bit better video on here. But just looking at any areas in here where I think, you know, there's too much dark showing through or too much light or, you know, it's, it's blended too much where, you know, I'm not seeing certain areas pop. So like one of the things that I saw was, you know, the cheekbones need to be brought back out. So I'm adding a little bit more of that Jacaro orange on the cheeks, um, as well as the nose. So I'll blend those back at, in a bit, but I uh, wanted to bring that out, make, make that uh, stick out a little bit more. Um, also, there's some areas where there was like too much of that dark base tone showing through and it wasn't blended real well. So I'm just going through and touching that up. Uh, you'll see in some of these areas, I'll, you know, kind of put a little bit of paint on there, pat it with my thumb and, you know, then kind of move to the next spot. Once again, I'm not trying to, um, you know, completely change the look here. I'm not trying to paint over anything that's been do done. I'm just trying to blend everything and make it look natural and look right together. So. All right. Now I'm starting on the hairline. So this is actually the hair itself, not, not the skin around the hair. Um, but I'm just... I use a small brush. This is actually a ZEM 10 over zero. Um, they, they sell a, the ZEM brushes uh, on Amazon. I believe it's like 13 or $14 for five of them. They're really tiny and they help get into um, a bunch of the smaller areas. So I do around, you know, the, the, where the beard is touching the skin uh, where the, the hair is touching the, the skin on the forehead and just really get those in close areas with that small, tiny brush. And then I'll go back through with a bigger brush and hit the majority of the hair and beard um, with, with something that's got a little bit more uh, substance on the brush and I can hold more paint. So right now I'm just getting in those really close details around the ear um, and then I'll also get in and do like the eyebrows and stuff like that. So I'm starting out with the black. Uh, this is going to be a, an older character. Uh, the O in OMK stands for old. It's old man Kyle. Um, so I'm going to do the gray over this in a little while. Uh, but I want to start with the black first and get that base in there. So just continuing to paint all the detail parts. Right now I'm on the eyebrows working on that. Uh, just trying to get all that really tiny stuff in there without ruining what I've done so far on the face. So now you can see kind of where I'm at now. And this really helps to frame what you've done so far and, and make it stand out a bit. So you can see, you know, what those flesh tones look like that you were just doing. Um, because it, it frames it so well and, and kind of makes it look a little different. So now I'm just onto a bigger brush and I'm hitting, you know, all those other areas of the hair and beard. Um, so fast forward a bit on there because that one, that took a little bit to cover all that area. And I'll get it underneath the beard too. Um, I know there's certain areas on this that really aren't going to show when it's on the figure, but... 
I like to make sure that it's completely painted and covered. Um, you know, whether I'm selling it or keeping it for myself, I just I want to make sure that that whole area is covered just in case you have the figure at a certain angle or maybe you've got them facing a certain way and, you know, you never know what things might show up from underneath or behind or whatever. So I just make sure I get it all covered. So here I've got, you know, everything covered. Here's what it looks like. It is still wet. So before I add that gray, I'm going to go ahead and dry that uh, with, the, with the heat gun. Uh, make sure that it is very dry before I start adding any of the gray. Uh, but the next step I'm going to do before I do that is go through the eyes. For this one, I'm using uh, Flayed One Flesh for the eye um, instead of white. Uh, I was trying something different on this one. Um, I, I think somewhere in between white and this would, would maybe be better. Uh, this was a little bit too tan, I think. Um, I mean, overall, it ended up working, um, but I think in the future, I would maybe use something a little bit lighter than this, but not quite white. If you use strictly like just a plain white, um, it looks too bright. It, it doesn't look right. It looks a little cartoony. So I was going for a little bit different here, and I think maybe just went a little too far the opposite direction. So um, as you're painting the whites of the eyes you want to make sure that you're covering the entire area. So, you know, this is this is a part that a lot of people struggle with is on the eyes. And, you know, there, there's not a lot of space to work with. Depending on what uh, head sculpt that you have, you're, you're working in a very tiny space. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you give yourself as big of a palette with that eye as you can. So you want to make sure that you hit all of that spot that should be white, make sure it is white. And if that means that you go over a little bit onto um, the bottom eyelid or the top eyelid, don't worry about it. We're going to go back over that area afterward anyway um, to touch it up and blend it in and make sure everything looks right. So just, you know, I don't want to say glob it in there, but, but make sure you cover that whole area. Make sure you get every bit of white in there that you need. So as we move into the colored part of the eye and, and the pupil, we've, we've got um, enough space to work with. So after I got the white, you can see I'm, what I'm doing here is starting to put in, um, he's going to have brown eyes. So I'm starting with a darker brown, and I'm actually using the base tone that we used. Um, and I put a little tiny dot on the one eye, little tiny dot on the other eye, and then I take a look at it and see, are they lined up? Um, is one too high, one too low, one too far to the left or right? And then, you know, I make the adjustments and continue to build out um, that from there. So, you know, because the tiny dot that I made isn't going to be the entire colored part. That's just a positioner, really. So it's just a dot, look at it, and now let's go ahead and, and make our circle kind of around that, but in a way that where the two eyes match up and look correctly. So doing that with that dark base color. And then I'm going to go back through with the regular Morn Fame Brown um, that's not, doesn't have any of the black in it and use that on the inside of this color that I did. And then at the end, then I'll put the tiny black dot in the middle. So you've got, you know, in this instance, we've got outer ring of dark brown, inner circle of lighter brown, and then the black dot in the middle to bring it all together. Um, you can do the same thing with other eye colors. So if you're doing blue, you would do a darker blue circle um, or ring, and then you would do a lighter blue color on the inside, and then your black. Green, same thing, you know. Then when you're done, you'll just gloss them and, um, you know, create that really nice, shiny, wet look for this. Some people will add um, a little white reflection spot in there. And you can do that if you've got enough space. If, if you've got a big enough eye that you can add that in there, you can. Otherwise, just by glossing it, when, you know, light hits it and you're taking a photo, 
um, it'll kind of create that naturally and you don't need that white in there. So it, it's one of those things where if you can do it, great. Um, if you can't or you're worried that you're going to mess up your eye, uh, just leave that out and just make sure you gloss it really good. So at this point, I've finished the eye and I'm working on the eyelids. So if you remember earlier, I talked about doing the white space. You're going to kind of go over, you know, the upper and bottom eyelid just to make sure that you have enough white um, eye to work with. And now we're covering that up and really framing that eye. So for the upper eyelid, I'm doing a black line and... Um, it is a very small brush that I'm using, but even with that, the, the black line is going to be a little thicker than I want it to be. So then I go back over it with the brown and cover about half of that black line that I just made so that it uh, makes that black line thinner. So, um, and then I'll just make sure that the rest of the upper eyelid and lower eyelid are blended in and look right. You may have to kind of mess around with your initial base that you had, as well as the Morn Fang or even some of the black if you need to, um, just to make sure that you've got the right colors. Um, the upper eyelid is going to be a little bit darker and the lower eyelid is going to be a little bit lighter, uh, but you still want it to blend in and look nice. Here I'm just touching up some of the black on the hair. Um, as I've handled this head and been moving it around, there's some spots that um, were not covered. So just touch that up and get it ready so that I can apply the gray. Now I've got uh, my Celestra gray from Citadel. Uh, you could use really any gray that you wanted to that you think will work with that hair color that you're looking for. Uh, for me, this one I think works well. And I'm just drying off my brush here. I'm going to do some dry brushing so I'm just trying to get as much of that paint off as I can. You see me rubbing that off there. And then once I get it to a point where I feel like I've gotten most of the paint off, um, I will go against the back of my hand and uh, just make sure that it looks the way I want and it doesn't have too much paint globbed onto that paintbrush um, that's going to catch on anything on the sculpt. Um, as I start applying the gray, I'm doing it away from the face. So I'm trying to do the areas of the beard and hair that aren't close to the skin tone. Um, I've, I've got the skin tone and eyes and everything the way that I want to at this point. So I really don't want to mess that up and have to go back and try to um, cover that up and, and have to remix paint in order to try to get the colors right. So I'm uh, just trying to stay on the bigger parts with the dry brushing here. And then I will go in with a smaller brush and use that to get the like mustache and eyebrows and the smaller details. Um, you know, just trying to be really careful as I do it to not hit any of that flesh tone. So here I'm still hitting the bigger parts. And then here's the smaller brush. You can see me kind of working on that that mustache there i already just did the eyebrows but same kind of thing there where i'm taking that smaller brush and still doing a dry brushing but with a much smaller brush and getting in there and here i'm getting close to the face with some of those parts that my bigger brush did not hit um, just to make sure that i've got all that and i i did end up taking after all this was done i took uh, a little bit of black and did some extra dry brushing on the areas that looked a little bit too gray um, just to kind of tone that back down so it wasn't so bright. Then this is what the head looks like after I've done the all the dry brushing for the beard and hair. And then at this point, I'm just kind of looking it over and seeing if there's any spots that I need to touch up. Uh, this could be you know, spots where I got some of the gray dry brushed on the flesh tone could be, um, I know at one point I, I looked on the underside of the nose, there was um, some spots that I had to touch up a little bit where it wasn't blended well. Uh, there's some spots here on the forehead where I'm just kind of putting one of the, uh, I'm actually using the Mornfang Brown that is um, 
watered down uh, as well as some of that base kind of mixed together and then touching up a few of these spots and just kind of hitting it and then patting it with my hand um, which is helping to make that blend so it's not covering everything that I've done um, it's just blending those colors together where there's any sort of harsh transitions so you just kind of look over your character um, check all those areas look for areas where um, you may not notice it at first so like when you're looking at it straight on you may not notice the underside of the nose or the back side of the ear um, things like that so really you know give this a good once over where you're looking at all the spots check the lips check everything that's on here and make sure that there's nothing that really stands out um, and the magnifier helps in this instance too because if you're just doing it uh, without a magnifier what you're going to find sometimes is that you'll take a picture after you're done and then you'll go oh man how did i miss that um, so the magnifier does help to catch some of those things as well uh, there's a couple different options you can use for that. I know some people use like the headgear magnification. Um, I found this one with the light and the arm on Amazon. Uh, it was similar to one that I saw Sherry using at the studio, and I, I just like it a lot. It works well for me. So here's everything after all that touch-up is done. And the only thing I've got left to do on here is the little uh, wraps for the braids in his beard. So for that, I'm gonna use this blue. It's a Cantor blue uh, from Citadel. Um, and it's just to kind of blend in a little bit with the loin piece and the belt that are gonna be on the, the dwarf body that I'm using. Uh, it'll be a Deluxe Dwarf Legion Builder uh, from the most recent uh, Deluxe Legion Builder wave. Uh, I did do some uh, rivets and trim and stuff on there, but I didn't do a whole lot of work on the on the base figure. I wanted the you know head really to be the the big um, piece on this that draws you to it. So, but here I'm just you know touching up those little straps on the braids and you know adding a little bit of color there. Um, I don't want it to be anything too vibrant that draws your eyes to it uh, just want a little separation there and um, something that that brings the colors together of the figure so at this point the only thing left for me to do is to clear coat the eyes um, i'm using a citadel art coat is what i do for my gloss uh, i feel like that gives you a really nice gloss and a wet look to the eyes uh, the one step i did not show here was i will typically clear coat my uh, head before I do the eyes. So I use a um, Mr. Super Clear. It's a flat spray. Um, some of them say flat, some of them say matte, but uh, either of those uh, Mr. Super Clears uh, will work really well. Uh, there is a gloss one, so be careful not to get that one, but I'll spray the head down with that. Um, and then I use this Ard Coat on the eyes, making sure that I get uh, the complete eye for both the left and the right. And here it is done. And this is what it looks like on the actual figure itself. So hopefully this helps somebody um, in terms of painting with dark flesh tones. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, please, please like it and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.